party people hello it is randy coming at you from the green room in north dakota from grandma's house i hope you're all having a wonderful spectacular amazing beating day if you are new to the channel welcome if you're here checking out um this next installment of the missing link okay uh we, today we are going to work on what they are calling the coiled horseshoe it is on page 59 it looks like so the coiled horseshoe so that's what we're going to be doing today i am pretty excited about this one this one is considered to be a moderate um skill level so um we shall see how it goes uh but if you're new here welcome to the channel please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you know when i'm putting up videos i have been um uh, trying to be consistent on the internet, but sometimes that doesn't always work, <laughs> um, especially here in the ND. But um, I don't think I put up a video, a missing link video last week. So I figured I better get on it. So I'm thinking, I am thinking that this is number 20, but I'm not actually sure. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was going to tell you that we are going to, uh, we're going to use a lollipop today as a jewelry tool. So if you happen to have a lollipop laying around, you might want to grab that before we get started. If you don't, uh, I'm going to maybe also try this bail making plier to be determined. So again, sometimes we don't have all of our stuff. <laughs> Uh, let's get down to the mat, get into it, and get this party started. Here we are on the mat. This is what we are going to be working on today. Uh, this is what she looks like. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's get our materials. It says we are going to need 22 gauge silver. Uh, 22 gauge silver wire. It says sterling silver, but we don't have that. We got this. We got 22 gauge soft flex. You know me, living my life in 22 gauge. I'm gonna use bright silver, so we got that. It also says that we are going to need eight and one fourth inches of 18 gauge silver. So I have that here. Uh, I purchased these at the Taylor's Falls Bead Store. And it says for tools, we are going to need a chain nose player. So I got my chain nose, flat nose, round nose, yeah. there we go, round nose player, a coiling tool or steel mandrel, two millimeters. So this is where, <laughs> this is where it gets a little interesting. So as you know, I'm in North Dakota, don't have all my tools. So I'm going to use a lollipop. This is probably three millimeters, not two. But uh, it is what it is. This is what we're going to work with today. So if you happen to have a Tootsie Pop rolling around, you might want to grab that. If you don't, you can always try this guy right here. Um, we're going to need a flush cutter. And a Sharpie. Oh, I don't have a Sharpie. Do I have a Sharpie? No. <laughs> Maybe I'll run around and find the Sharpie when we need it. Um, liver of sulfur, which is, I'm not gonna use that. Steel wool and a rotary tumbler, not gonna use that. So, uh, let me go find the Sharpie, I'll be right back. Okay, I got the Sharpie. So, let's get on into it. It says, you guys can see this. Step one, using the coiling tool, which we don't have, form a coil with the entire length of the 22 gauge silver wire. That is the first step. So according to this, it says we need 20 inches of silver wire of the 22. Okay, 
So, I don't have my froggy tape. As you can tell, I'm really prepared for this video. So, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it. I would think that my mat is probably like a foot or so. So, it's gonna go with that. Two lengths of the mat. All right, using the coiling tool, form a coil, see page 24 if you need help. Well, what I'm gonna do, so my thought process here is that they are, they are making, zoom in, they're making this portion with this coil. So my coil is gonna be a little bigger because I'm gonna use like more than a two millimeter thing, but that's fine. It's fine. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for right now. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to coil my wire. And it says coil the whole thing. The entire length. And then we're going to trim it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sucker stick. And I'm just going to start wrapping this around. Oh. Make sure I'm in the frame here. And I'm gonna start wrapping this around first on the bottom with the tail. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my coils are really closely tight together. Okay. And I'm just gonna start coiling. Now I'm turning the sucker, not really the wire around this. And the reason I'm doing it with this sucker stick is because I don't have my coiling gizmo. But also, I figured it would be easier to maneuver this sucker versus something else on this video. So this is what I'm doing. We're just gonna coil up the whole thing. Just making sure the coils are really close together. and kind of tight. When I'm done, I'm gonna eat this sucker. There is my coil on the sucker stick. I am going to have to run and get the uh, measure in froggy tape because it says we got to have an inch and a half. So I'll be right back. Okay, now. Let me zoom you out here. So according to this, Use the coiling tool to form a coil with the entire length of the 22 gauge wire. Slide the coil off the tool and trim to one and a half. Set the coil aside. Okay, one and a half. So I'm just gonna take this off of here. Got a coil. And trim it to one and a half. Ew. I've got one and a fourth. Probably because Randy doesn't measure things. But regardless, that's how I'm going. <laughs> so I am just going to trim these ends off. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it here. To the side. On to the next step. The next step says mark the 18 gauge three and three and one fourth from the end of the sharpie. What? What sharpie? <laughs> step two. 
Mark the 18 gauge wire three and one fourth inch from one end. Oh, with a Sharpie. Okay. With a Sharpie. Using the middle of the round nose pliers, form the first half of a wire wrapped loop at the mark in the wire. Okay. Right. So let's get our wire. They said we need eight and one fourth inches. So I'm assuming I won't need that much now that I have a shorter coil, but it's fine. We might need it. What do I know? I don't know things. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Eight and one fourth. Right there. Again, 18 gauge wire. Got it. Then it says mark it with the Sharpie. Three and a fourth. Okay, three and a fourth. Okay. Oh, I was going to use that as the top of my marker. That's not appropriate. <laughs> okay, so I got it marked out. Just do a little line on there, right there. That says they're gonna make the first half of a wire wrapped loop in the, in the middle of the round nose. I'm just looking over here. Okay, at the mark in the middle of the round nose, okay, we are going to start the wire wrapped loop. So we're gonna start it. Bring this around. So I'm just acting as if. This is like just any other regular wire wrapped loop, right? So I'm just going to bring it around because that's what I would normally do. So I would have this. This is what I would have. And let's see what the book says about that. Okay, so slide the coil, no. Using the middle round nose pliers, form the first half of a wire wrap loop at the mark in the wire. Okay, so we did that. This is C figure one. Okay, so we did that. So we got, now figure two, slide the coil into the long part of the wire. Slide the coil onto the long part. The long part. What is the long part? Let's take a look, see at that. Oh, I guess that's this part. It's longer than the other one. I don't really care for that. I want this, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Holding the loop with the chain nose pliers and wrapping the tail of wire over the end of the coil five times over the end of the coil okay so this is what they want us to do can you guys see this i find this very interesting i wonder if we're gonna run this i'm gonna read ahead to see if we're gonna run the rest of this wire through this which would make sense to me i don't know what, what they're doing here because it doesn't look like they're doing that but i will read okay make a second wire wrap loop at the other end of the wire repeating step three and trim the excess wire. Repeating step three. Slide the coil into the long part of the wire. Okay, so I believe it would only make sense that they must be running this through the entirety of the coil. It does not say that, just pointing that out. But it says make a wire wrapped loop at the other end of the wire. So it has to be run through the entire coil. 
So that is why I think they want us to put on this really long side. All right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Okay, so I am going to use the long side, but in order to do that, I'm gonna fix this up real quick because it's a little wonky. I'm just gonna kind of get it straightened out. Okay, so this is what I have. Should look like this. I'm gonna, I hope you guys can see all that. I'm going to put the coil onto here, onto the longest part. Uh huh. Okay. Holding with the chain nose, they said. Hold the loop. Now, I'm gonna go around one time here before I start going on the coil. Because, remember my coil, my lollipop stick was a little larger. And uh, so I just want to make sure. Oh, I just want to make sure I can get at least one wrap on here first. Okay. So now we're going to start wrapping five times around this end of the coil. So I'm going to kind of hold it at a wonky angle in order to keep it down there. Because it's going to want to slide, right? You know what? They didn't say this, but I'm going to bend it. I'm gonna bend it. I don't know if you should do that or not. Here we go. Just to give me a little something to hang on to. This is not good. There's three. Four. I don't like it. I do not like this. <laughs> okay, hold up. Gotta get it in there. Get in there, you. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got, got an issue here. Okay, so what I've done is I unwrapped this. Remember I said, oh, I'm going to put a wrap on it. I don't think you should do that. <sighs> We're going to try it again. I think I'm just going to use the same wire. Please don't judge. <laughs> I think that it would be best if when we're holding this, we can kind of wrap the coil, the first coil end around the end. I don't know if you saw what I did there. Let me back it up. So here's my coil. You can see it's got, looks like a little spring. If I move it up real close, I can kind of twist it around the actual loop that I'm making here. And I, I'm hoping, I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm hoping that then when I start to wrap this around, it's going to help me. I got to hold that in place. This is like almost a two-man job. Let me make gravity my friend. I'm going to hold it upside down. Get in there. Okay, I'm at four. Five. Hmm. All right, five and a half. I hope it's in there. Looks in there. It's messy. It's messy. That's fine. All right. So, I tuck that in. Try to. Okay, I'm kind of trying to try to even things up here. Hmm, 
pretty wonky. Oh, you guys can't see. It's pretty wonky. Let me see what the book says. Okay. No, it does not look like that. I'll tell you that much. Okay, it says, make a second wire wrap loop at the other end of the wire. Repeat step three. Trim the excess wire. Place the middle of the coil on the thickest portion of the Sharpie and bend it down carefully to form a U-shape. Um, okay. So, I'm going to go over here and I go in the middle of the mandrel. Do my wire wrap loop. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, I'm going to try this again on this side. I'm going to try to kind of get this spiral to work with me here. Stick my nail in there and kind of wrap it around this wire a little bit. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kind of flatten that out. I'm going to hang on to that spring with this, with this with all of this and see if that's helpful because this is kind of messy. Okay, I'm going to go around. Now I'm supposed to get five wraps. Now, I don't want to go too tight because I'm seeing when I'm going too tight, it is not good. <laughs> I only got like three on that side. But, let's see here. that off and kind of tuck it in a little bit. I'm going to trim this little piece of spring that I was holding on to. And I'm going to try to help this out a little bit. Well, I would say the side where I hold it on, where I held on to the spring while it's wrapping looks better than this side where i was really struggling but for the sake of this video we're going to do what they say and we're going to stick this um we're going to stick this sharpie in the middle and we're going to kind of use it as a mandrel to bend this around okay to make a u shape they said And then they said, <clears throat> number five, place, oh, we did that already. Number six, grasp one loop with the flat nose plier and bend it back slightly to straighten. Copy on the other side. Loops should be parallel to each other. The next step is oxidize, which we're not going to do, but okay. So, they said basically make make these loops so they're parallel. So we'll do that. Okay. Okay. So all in all, this is not this is not the best situation here. But I mean it's my first try. We are learning these together. It's fine. What I have learned is that holding on to the coil up here, well, first you might want to make your coil as big as they say, but holding on to the coil up here while wrapping the wire around really makes it easier than this other side where I, where I didn't do that. Um, bend this a little. I understand the concept. I think the concept is cute. I think this side, like, if you look at this side, it's not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. It might be cute with some, like, different colored wire here. 
um, like if this part was a different color to kind of give it a little differentiation. But see, I used that lollipop stick, stick which was about at least three millimeters. They said use two. So that's why the sizing is a little bit off. Um, but whatever. I think if you maybe went in with instead of an 18, a 16 gauge, then with this three millimeter spiral, that would probably look better. Um, so that is what I got going on. I will tell you Here is the little linky link, and uh, mine don't look like that, <laughs> but that's what it is. So there you go. Um, oh, it always slides away when I let go of the book. Okay, so it is what it is. I think that uh, with practice, this could be cute. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, we gotta practice this one because I don't know if you noticed, but this is the link on the front of the book. Right there, that's the link. So we're gonna be using it. <laughs> get to practicing and get the right mandrel, I guess. Um. Anyways, this is just proof that you know these things are hard. <laughs> They're hard. They don't always work out the first time that you do them. Things need practice. We will practice because I am making this necklace. I am gonna make this on this cover of this book. And I don't know if it's going to look like that. It's definitely not going to look like that unless I practice this thing. <laughs> so, anyways, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful, spectacular, amazing day. I'm sending all the good beady vibes. I would love to see what's on your mat. If you want to go ahead and throw a picture of what's on your beading mat today in our Facebook group, Thunder Horse Ascendant Facebook group, please go ahead and do that. Just let us know if this is your mat today. Uh, leave a comment down in the video if you tried this, if you if you have any tips, tips, always, <laughs> if you got any tips or tricks that was helpful, <laughs> um, make sure to give this video a like and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.